Thanks so much for watching my Taiban, New Mexico video. If this is something you love, you want to see more videos like this, you can do me a huge favor, subscribe below or become a patron at patreon.com slash Will Taylor. You can also get on my email list at join.stringsinthewoods.com. That's join.stringsinthewoods.com. I want to tell you a little bit about how I found this 116-year-old church. I've been uh, traveling between Austin and Santa Fe for many, many years. And one of the things I love to do when I drive is I imagine, you know, what the lives are like of the people and the houses and, and what is, what, what's happened in, in, <clears throat> in a lot of these locales. And it's just a fun game to play. I go into gas stations and I, I really get to feel the local color of the area that I'm going through, the different cultures crisscrossing. And it's such a fun game to play when I drive to Santa Fe or when I come back to Austin. And I've really gotten to know this route really well. And <clears throat> there's lots of remnants of the past, ghost towns, uh, old uh, abandoned railway stations that are just gorgeously constructed, beautiful architecture, you know, with made with such care. And they still exist. And a lot of times I've gone in there and opened doors and looked at rooms that look like, essentially are, are just like frozen time. Like you could go back 30, 40 years and there's still typewriters and cigarettes and little ashtrays. And you look around and you like to just you close your eyes. You can imagine the people bustling through the, the office and what they were conversing about and things like that. Well, <clears throat> I've been going past this old abandoned church for, uh, you know, for 15 years. Uh, I finally pulled over on the way back from Santa Fe and I decided, you know, this would be a great thing to do uh, a violin video so I pulled over and I went in and and then later on I, I researched it and found out it's this really interesting town uh, that came about in 1906 and has a really interesting history it's near the area where Billy the Kid had his uh, hideout supposedly and Pat Garrett the sheriff who shot him <clears throat> dead it's just only 12 miles from the, from the Billy the Kid's grave Really interesting history. I looked it up and found out that this church is is over a hundred years old. And I want to read you some. I want to read you a blog about this church from this blog that's called City of Dust. So if you travel east along Highway 60 past Fort Summer, which is the final resting place of Billy the Kid, to the unincorporated town of Taiban, New Mexico, 
Taiban is known for its old Presbyterian church, a lonely, gutted house of worship visited by photographers and the traveling faithful. The church, once part of the neighborhood, which included homes, businesses, and the two-story Taiban High School, now sits by itself out on the prairie. Not a single business remains in Taiban, but it was not always this way. Taiban was named for a nearby creek. The source of Taiban Creek was Taiban Spring, originally known as Brazil Spring, after a Portuguese immigrant, Manuel Brazil, arrived in 1871, the first recorded settler in the area. The meaning of the word Taiban is obscure, although it might be a Navajo or Comanche word for horsetail, a reference either to a local plant or to three small tributaries that flowed into the creek. It is said that Billy the Kid watered his horse at Taiban Spring. Taiban owed its existence to the railroad. Taiban was founded in 1906 when the Berlin Cutoff was laid across the eastern plains of New Mexico, redirecting rail traffic from the mountains north. The school was built and contracts were drawn for the construction of 50 homes. By 1907, there was a bank and a hotel. In 1908, the Topeka and Santa Fe Railroad began actively encouraging settlement of the region. Over 1,300 trains passed through the plains, bringing homesteaders from across the country. But the vast majority of immigrants did not settle in Taiban. In 1909, the town's population peaked at 400 residents. They were mostly farmers and sheep herders, already veterans of conflict with both the landscape and established ranching interests. In the fall of 1908, construction began on the first Presbyterian church of Taiban. It was completed at a cost of $250, less than $100 of which could be covered by the congregation, necessitating loans from the ladies of the Baptist church, as well as the Taiban Savings Bank. The first sermon given by Reverend John Gass was sparsely attended due to cold weather. Shortly after Taiban was founded, a heated controversy erupted over the construction of the Pink Pony Saloon and Dance Hall, which in addition to selling alcohol was to hold cop fights and house a snake den in its basement. Opened amidst great consternation, the Pink Pony became the only one of 40 businesses operating in Taiban in 1908 to survive into the latter part of the 1930s. A settler, Vane Otias, describes his experience arriving in Taiban. There we were, hauling down off the steps of the jerk water train at Taiban, New Mexico. Pa, Ma, and the kids. After counting the suitcases, the packages, and the bundles, Ma called the roll. All were present. The bunch of us, with Ma herding, started for the hotel. We had come out here to file on some land, make a living farming, and when we had proved up, sell out and pack back east rich. On the way to the hotel, I made observations for my own particular benefit, namely, there were two places in town which would have thrown Carrie Nation into a frenzy if she had been one of our party. Watch me hurry, as I had come from a dry state. Just as soon as I could find an excuse, I was admitted to the bar of the first emporium. I meant to say, when I found an excuse, that the missus would accept. The alcohol and religion squared off, vying for the soul of Taiban, whose heart was being broken by the farming of an inhospitable and increasingly barren land. Some years, the church won out and Taiban was dry. Other years, those laws were overturned and Taiban was again wet. Into the 1930s, as the depression and drought deepened, and families left the area. Following prohibition, it was large liquor that kept Taiban from blowing away entirely. For nearly all of the town's existence, the Taiban Presbyterian Church had played a vital role in the spiritual life of the community, serving Methodists and Baptists as well. But with the congregation dwindling, the last service was held in 1936. After World War II, only seven businesses operated in Taiban, which now had a population of 50. The bars were most successful, and customers from dry counties in West Texas and Oklahoma came out for a drink. The town even had an airfield, Taiban International Airport, and the wealthy would fly in to purchase liquor. 
People as far away as Oklahoma knew Thai Band's reputation as the bootlegging capital of eastern New Mexico and west Texas. But alcohol isn't enough to save a town that has lost all hope of real prosperity. Passenger and express train service had ceased in Thai Ban in 1933, the same year telegraph service was discontinued. New highways and decades of difficult to impossible dry farming drove nearly all the residents of Thai Ban elsewhere. By 1960, only one business remained, a bar, and now there are none. While the battle between God and alcohol played out for many years in Thai Ban, walking the town site, now it appears, there was no clear winner. The bars are all gone and turned to dust. The little church stands vacant and exposed, the bell tower removed in 1960, the baby grand piano sold, the doors and the windows destroyed by vandals. So let's call it a draw for now. Visitors are starting to leave prayers in the alcove of the church, behind where the old walnut pulpit used to be. So perhaps it will have a life yet. In the meantime, if you want to see such a fight for yourself, this same battle continues to be played out in towns all across America. Maybe your town is one of them. This comes from a blog called City of Dust, The Lost and Wondrous Wreckage of America. The Ceaseless Road to Nowhere. And the author's name is J.M. House. You can check the description of the video for a link to this blog and his email address. And if you want to see more things like this, you can support me at patreon.com slash willtaylor. Follow, make a comment, or join our email list at join.stringsinthewoods.com. Thanks for listening.